Good morning. Jesus is Lord. Confess that with me right now. And thank God his word is our most valuable possession. And it is working mightily in us right now. We're looking at the fact that the word of God, according to Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, and Psalms 107, 20, that the word of God is life unto us that find it and health or medicine to all of our flesh. Saints, there is nothing that the word of God will not cure. There is nothing that the word of God will not heal. And so the instructions, God gives us specific instructions for taking his word. The first is to attend, to focus on the word. Don't focus on your uh, symptoms or your sickness and disease. Don't focus on those. Focus on the word of God. You might, a person might have five or six things wrong in their body with their eyes, with their emotions, with their mind, with their blood pressure, with different things. But you don't have to focus on those because the word of God is health to all of your flesh. Just focus on the healing promises, which I will give you uh, a couple of those today. And also, excuse me, we found in Romans chapter 10 that he says, what saith it, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Because as you speak that word, then you are also hearing it with your ears. And as I was sharing with you yesterday, the way I started out on this was as I found out the power of the word, then I would take a scripture and write it on note cards. I would even put note cards on the mirrors for the children to confess the word. That is a great way because you're putting it before your eyes. You're putting it in your mouth. You're also hearing it. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that is a great way for you to take the medicine of the word of God into your spirit man. And it becomes health to all of your flesh. The more you take, the quicker the word of God becomes healing and health to all and life to you that finds it. So take the word of God, attend to it, focus on the promises, let it not depart from your eyes, keep it in the midst of your heart, and then is when it becomes life and health and medicine. So let me give you some medicine right now. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5. He says, surely, this is what God said. And when God says surely, then it is surely. Surely he hath borne. Our, it says griefs in the King James, but I looked that word up in the Strong's Concordance one time, and it said that the Hebrew is weakness, sickness, and pain. God was prophesying this. So this was God prophesying of what would take place on the cross through Jesus. Surely he hath borne, and that means to bear, all of yours and my weakness, sickness, and pain, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for mine and your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Then 1 Peter 2.24, after the cross, Peter said, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. And I love what one minister, Fred Price, said, 
He said, if we were healed, we are healed. And if we are healed, we is healed right now. And that is the truth. So that's what we put in our mouth, that with Jesus' stripes, we were healed. And so we are healed. Also notice that that scripture says that, and Isaiah 53 says that he bore our sins. He became our sin, which took care of the penalty of sin. But he bore the sin and he bore the penalty for our sin. One of the penalties was sickness and disease. That was one of the curses found in Deuteronomy 28, which says every sickness and every disease. He named some of them, but because God knew that there would be diseases named after Deuteronomy, for instance, cancer was not a disease back then that was named. Um, obviously, COVID was not a disease that was named back then. So to make sure that there could be no doubt about it, he said also every sickness and every disease that's not written in the book of the law, that's not written there. So God took care of every sickness and every disease by Jesus becoming our sin and becoming our sickness and our disease for us. And you say, but yes, but I haven't done everything just right. Listen to this. You're going to love this. In Psalms 107, verse 17, he says, Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. Notice that. Fools. Have we ever been foolish and because of our foolishness, we were open the door for affliction or whatever? It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Notice what he says next. And he saved them out of all their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So Jesus took care of your sin and my sin, the sin of the world, and the penalty of that sin. This is a whosoever will gospel. It's, that is the good news. It's, it sounds like it's too good to be true, but he took our place. He died for the ungodly. We were all the ungodly so that we could not only go to heaven and live eternally with him, but that we could live his eternal life, the life of God here in health and perfect soundness of mind and perfect divine health. But we have to take that with our mouth. So begin putting that medicine in your mouth, Isaiah 53, 3 through 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24, and I'll give you some more medicine tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. He is your healer, and his word is life unto you that find it, and health, medicine to all of your flesh.